Hello, this is John Brewer. This week, we're going to be talking about actually aiming weapons in Space Engineers. Much of this series has been focused on weapon systems specifically designed to engage at over 2 kilometers. At 2 kilometers, a 1 degree difference in aiming amounts to 35 meters of deviation. For reference, the red ship is 120 meters long and 47 and a half meters tall. If the red ship turns to present a different side, or profile, to its attacker, the target can be as small as 67.5 meters by 47.5 meters. When we talk about how big a target appears on our screen, we are discussing its apparent size, or angular size. We'll be talking about apparent size in degrees in this video, but you can also think of apparent size in terms of pixels. Space Engineers draws your point of view 90 degrees wide horizontally, so to convert from degrees to pixels for your game, divide your horizontal resolution by 90. For instance, I filmed this series at 1280 by 720. A degree for me is about 14 pixels across. So at 2000 meters, facing its side to us, the red ship is about 3.4 degrees long and about 1.4 degrees tall. Most weapons we've been looking at in this series, though, don't need to be aimed so precisely to hit. Homing missiles, for instance, often just need to get close enough to detect the target to hit it. A marginal detection usually doesn't give the missile enough time to turn, but often homing warheads will increase the effective profile of the target by 30 meters on each side. If you can get your homing missile to enter these spheres, assuming it isn't shot down by point defense or deflected by a gravity shield, you can be reasonably certain it will hit. Gravity cannons solve the problem of small apparent targets in a different way. Gravity cannons firing multiple projectiles will scatter, as we saw in our previous videos. There are a number of ways to measure the scatter of a gravity cannon, but for this video, I'll use a variant of circular error probability. Each time we fire a gravity cannon, the projectiles leave at slightly different angles. By watching where they impact, we can figure out how much the projectiles scatter in flight. Most of the shots will be traveling close to the vector of the barrel. The circular error probability is the circle that contains 50% of the shots that impacted closest to the aim point. We can convert that circle back into a spread angle for the gravity cannon. If we superimpose that circle on our targeting diagram, we can see that the gravity cannon can miss by a little, but still have some of its projectiles hit the target. So our weapon systems make it easier for us to score a hit, but we still need to fire within a few degrees of the target in order to have any chance of hitting it. So how do we know we're aiming at the right point? To hit a target, we need to fire our shot such that it intersects the target in both time and space. If we fire a shot that goes where the target was, or where it hasn't quite gotten to yet, we miss. The combination of angle we need to fire our weapons at, and the time at which we need to fire, is called the firing solution, or shooting solution. There are a couple of trivial situations that make aiming very easy. There's the case where both the firing ship and the target are stopped. We simply point our weapon directly at the target ship and fire. This is the way we've been conducting our test firings in this series. Second, there's the situation where the target is flying directly at you or directly away from you. These are known as constant bearing decreasing range or constant bearing increasing range targets. That's CBDR or CBIR for short. In these circumstances, we also simply point our weapons directly at the target and fire. There is a more difficult but common situation in which the target is moving at a constant speed. Since hitting a stationary target is so very, very easy in Space Engineers, it is usually advisable for ships engaged in combat to maintain at least some motion with respect to their opponent. There are two major schools of thought on how to deal with a maneuvering opponent. The first is somewhat simpler, but exposes you to return fire. The second requires considerably more effort, but allows you to fire on an opponent without making it very easy for them to return fire on you. We'll cover the first method this week, and the second next week. The method we'll cover this week is matching course and speed. When we are traveling at the same course and speed as our target, they are stationary with respect to us, and we can simply fire on them as if they were standing still. In Space Engineers, we are very fortunate to get an exact range to targets that are broadcasting with an antenna or beacon. If we can see the target, we can match course with it by adjusting our speed until it stays in one place in the sky and maintains a constant distance. If your ship has non-turreted gravity cannons, 
you'll probably want to be looking out of a camera near them when you perform this maneuver. First, disengage the ship's inertial dampers. Second, move the crosshairs onto the ship you want to match speed with. Third, use your ship's thrusters, W, S, A, D, space, and C, until the target doesn't drift out of the crosshairs. Finally, continue using the thrusters until the range indicator is constant. Once you've got the target fixed in the sky and the range is constant, you have matched the target's course and speed. At this point, the pilot might consider disengaging the thrusters to avoid accidentally changing course while firing. With the inertial dampers disabled, the attacker can rotate the ship to bring other weapon systems to bear on the target. There is one major complication with this process, though. It arises from the preferred reference frame and maximum speeds that Space Engineer supports. Let's illustrate with an example where a missile-armed warship has matched speeds with its target and is preparing to fire its missile. To simplify, we'll presume they're traveling directly abeam of each other at 100 meters per second. In this example, our missile accelerates at 5 meters per second per second. The physics simulation steps about 60 times per second. On the 53rd step of the simulation after engine ignition, the missile reaches 104.4 meters per second relative to the world. It is only moving 4.4 meters per second relative to the two ships. From now on, during each step of the simulation, space engineers will apply the acceleration the engines are providing, but then reduce the velocity vector to the world's maximum speed, 104.4 meters per second. The practical upshot of this process is that as the missile picks up speed toward the target, it loses speed in the direction it was previously traveling. The missile then seems to fall back from the two ships and misses by a wide margin. This same effect will preclude firing missiles ahead while at high speed and will affect gravity cannons with a muzzle velocity above 100 meters per second. Next week we'll explore these effects in greater detail, as well as how to calculate shooting solutions when your ship and the target ship are moving on different courses. Until then, I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.